Lauer along with Katie Kirk and we've got a busy half hour coming up. Have you heard many of the reviews? I know we've actually talked about a little bit about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. No, I mean, yeah. No? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I actually, I was going through the paper yesterday to look at all the movies I haven't seen yet. And that's really been well received and, and people are loving this movie, People are right? talking about it. There's a lot of Oscar buzz about it. It's Ang Lee's new movie. One of the stars is a woman named Michelle Yeoh. And she's going to be here to tell us about that film and her role in just a few minutes. Wasn't she in the James Bond movie, She was too? in uh, Tomorrow... Was Never it? No, Dies. Tomorrow Never Dies. And also Super Cop with Jackie Chan. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, very okay. and talented, very talented. And speaking of being beautiful, you know, it takes a lot of work to look good. I know it does. <laughs> you do a good job with it. You know? <laughs> And that's your latest weather. Thank you very much, Mr. Roker. Coming up, the star of the new movie, Crouching Dragon, Hidden... Pretty, cr hit Crouching Dragon, Hidden Tiger. Hidden Tiger. Cr oh. Okay. Oh. Anyway, she's up next. But first, this is Today on NBC. Oh. <laughs> Director Ang Lee's new film, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, is getting rave reviews. Actress Michelle Yeoh, in particular, has been singled out for her remarkable performance in this martial arts film with a romantic storyline. Michelle Yeo, nice to have you here. Pleasure to be here. And congratulations. People are saying, here's the good news and the bad news. Okay. People are saying such great things about you and the movie. That's the good news. The bad news is every once in a while you hear someone say, oh, that's that kung fu movie. Ah. Which is kind of a strange way to describe it. You don't like that, do you? No, because that's not what it is. How would you describe it? It's a real romantic epic, to be honest. And we have martial arts thrown in. It's not um, the main part of the movie. It's this love story. Uh, the background of these characters, the parallel love stories, that's much more important. And I think when you see the movie, um, you will feel that. Because, you know, when it comes to martial arts, Visually, it's very exciting, but without the dramatic side, without the story, the love, the complicated uh, emotional side that holds it together, it falls flat. Which is really the next step for those movies, because while people have been fascinated with the martial arts in the past, that's been one of the major complaints. Where's the storyline? Right. Usually it's just people coming together to fight, right. and this does take it another step. Yes, yes. And I think when I first... Um, um, got involved with this movie knowing that it was Ang Lee and I've seen all his movies and appreciate that you know he's a very sensitive director um, what was most challenging for me in this movie is the dramatic side uh, when I first heard the story when the story was read to me I actually rebelled against this character Xiu Lian I was thinking you know I'm, I'm thinking like a very contemporary woman um, 30 years no verbal no you know, words of love, yet she holds on so strong. Yeah, let's explain her character a little bit. She is a, a fighter. Yes. She's a sword fighter. Yes, she is in a man's world. Right, and yet she has had this repressed love for this warrior yes. for 30 years. Yes, the both of them. Unspoken he doesn't love. Say, he doesn't, you know, announce his love for her, so, which was the most difficult part. How do you be so still? Because my story was not told in words. It was told with the eyes. And fortunately, you know, I was given the opportunity to really get into the role because you have to feel it. It's not about telling you. Are you surprised that here we have a foreign movie spoken in Mandarin, subtitles, with the martial arts, and it's taken the critics in this country by storm? I think when you watch the film after the first five minutes, you forget that it's subtitled because you enter that magical world. And for us, it was very important to preserve the integrity of our genre of films. These are classics that we've grown up with, you know, these legends, these myths, these heroic uh, figures uh, that defy gravity. But we don't speak English. We have to speak in our language, which is very poetic. 
and you know the subtext is, comes across in the language but you understand it because at the end of the day you feel the essence of these characters you talk about these characters who defy gravity and, yes. and when if somebody is not prepared for this they're going to look and the first thing they're going to say is <gasps> this is a little science fiction <laughs> element here because these people do float yes. in ways. They, there are chase scenes here where they run on the tops of buildings yes. and barely touch the buildings. Right. I, that's something the American audience perhaps is not all that used to. We're looking at it right here. But this is very traditional in this genre. That's right, because it's also the philosophy of fighting um, this way is the enlightenment where your body transcends your physical form. There's a very spiritual element to That's these That's right, yes. You, you mentioned the director, Ang Lee, mm -hmm. and I understand when, when you first were asked about him and about his directing style, you kind of made a gesture, and it was <laughs> the cracking of a whip. Is, is he quite a taskmaster? No, he's a perfectionist. He knows what he wants, and I think when you work with a director, it's very important that he has a vision. I think if, even if you have the best script in the world, if you don't have a director that knows that wants uh, to say certain things, you know, we as actors would sit there and go, what is going on? Uh, for me to get into this role, this particular character, I spent hours, you know, talking with him, seeing from a man's point of view, and then also from a, a girl's point of view, how do I cope with a character who is set in the Qing Dynasty, who is so repressed, she's so regal, she's in a man's world, but at the same time when she walks into a room, she uh, commands your attention. And everything has to be done without, you know, big movements and gestures, like I'm walking into the room with drum rolls. And she said it's all with the eyes. Most oh, with the it eyes. haunted me for a long time. You're still living in Hong Kong. Yes. As I said, you're getting so much attention for this mov movie that a lot of roles are going to come your way now. Are you thinking about possibly changing addresses and moving to Hollywood? <laughs> I just started my own production company in Hong Kong. It's called Mythical Films. You know, I believe that films, movies, it's, it's about dreams, it's about making them a reality. I think what is most important to me is um, having, giving opportunities, having opportunities to show talents and to tell stories from the East, you know, coming out here to the West. The world is getting to be such a place that it's not that big that it's impossible for us to move around. But I think we should be all proud of what we are, our culture. And for example, now with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, we are exchanging and we are sharing with you what we know so well, but this is your first introduction. And I must say, you know, um, Sony Classics is doing a wonderful job of help making people understand and seeing it for what it is. It's our first introduction and we're liking it. Michelle thank Yeoh, you. thank you so much and congratulations on everything. Thank you. 42 past